Hello and welcome to Tea Break Film Reviews. My name's Michelle and today I'm going to be reviewing the newest teen film on Netflix, The Half of It. It may feel like a copy of To All The Boys I've Loved Before, but it's a much more intelligent portrayal of love. So hold your guitar and hear me out. The half of it follows Ellie Chu, a high school student supporting herself and her father by earning money writing essays for other students. She is asked to write a love letter by fellow student Paul for his crush, Esther, but ends up developing feelings for Esther herself. As with many teen films with this type of geek helps jock get their crush storyline, the characters think they're in love with one person but end up falling in love with someone completely unexpected, or in many cases, totally expected, as is the case with To All The Boys I've Loved Before. This does happen here, but along the predictable path of discovery, this film offers something more than the usual exaggerated hijinks populated by its genre. It has a purveying thoughtfulness and willingness to explore what love means. It does this through the complicated metaphors and ideas that Ellie and Esther explore through their letters, as well as occasional quotes about love shown on screen. The discussions dig deep without feeling preachy or gooey. The success of that, I think, has a lot to do with Leah Lewis, who brings a very effective sadness to the role. That's not to say this film will sadden you, I just want to commend her and the director for not going too large on the drama. High school is full of drama, sure, but it's also full of trying, succeeding, and failing at understanding yourself and others, and with that come just as many quiet moments as there are loud. This film is quiet in the sense that it allows emotions to develop naturally, unlike louder teen films such as Booksmart, which really play on the rambunctiousness of youth. Although the half of it shares the LGBTQ theme with Booksmart, and the great script, they go about being a good teen film in different ways, and I think I prefer the quieter approach. That said, this film falters in its climax. In the last quarter of the film, several ill-fitting things happened. One of these is the extra intrigue that they tried to add with the emergence of religious beliefs that, though mentioned, were not prominently featured throughout the rest of the film. They felt sudden, especially when channeled through the character of Paul. Then when we get to the big speech section, for some reason it became like a pantomime, where the background actors were either told to or dubbed to have such unnaturally big gasps that I was wondering whether I can rule out the introduction of canned laughter at any moment. It spoiled the considered dialogue that I had loved so much up to this point, and to add fuel to the fire, they even threw in a distasteful pun in this scene, as well as a morbid and uncharacteristic joke in the preceding scene from Ellie to her dad. It was so frustrating to watch, and though the end had a nice theme about how they'll continue to grow as they go into college, it just really lost its effectiveness. But before you rule out this film completely, I have to say that the style of it has really stuck with me since watching it. The cinematography and editing really helps capture the contemplative moments beautifully. An example of this is when Ellie and her dad first take a bite out of the taco sausages. They take center stage in the frame and the whole moment is elongated by not cutting. Also, the faded green and orange color palette really highlighted the smallness of the town, with the production design assisting in making every room feel lived in and decorated appropriately for the person it belongs to. The sound design and score, excluding those stupid gasps, also complemented the film elegantly. The animated introduction and the reoccurring quotes also managed to fit that established style with ease. It's the perfect blending of all of these elements that makes this film that bit better than other films in its genre. In truth, Booksmart did have a fantastic script, but I felt a little let down by the typicality of its audiovisual decisions, whilst here I can really see how the style echoes the themes of the story. 
Is that enough to excuse the last disappointing quarter of this film? I am altogether not sure, so I can only recommend giving the half of it a watch and deciding for yourself. Thank you for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to see more videos, and comment with your thoughts on the topic. What teen films have you been surprised by? This has been Tea Break Film Reviews, my name's Michelle, and I hope you have a great day.